Hello everyone, it's Truds here and today we've got another Destiny 2 build video. We've got another fun build on our hands today, which this time leans into the seasonal artifact mods and so will be only around until the end of the season. However, the base structure of this build is strong nonetheless and if these mods return in the future seasons, either in a temporary or permanent capacity, this build will be a go to. But before we get into this one, I've got to give a huge welcome to all the new subscribers recently. In the past few weeks, you've shown some crazy support on a variety of the builds I've put out. So much so that we blasted through one milestone and are steamrolling onto the next one. Thank you everybody, it's truly humbling. However, if you are a first time visitor, feel free to subscribe and join this positive, growing community we've got going on here. Now, on with the build. So like we said, we are dipping our toes back into the seasonal artifact to bring you a strong anti-champion build. We've covered a lot of these in various builds here lately, but this is one we haven't touched. Surge Detonators is the seasonal artifact mod which costs 2 neutral energy. This chest armor mod allows for arc grenades to cause disruption, delaying ability regeneration and lowering combatant damage output. This mod is strong against overload champions. Now we've covered a number of ways to deal with overload champions on the channel and this mod is just another tool in the box which will allow us to open up our weapon loadouts for some strong DPS options like Xenophage instead of using the disrupting blade mod on swords for example. Now to take advantage of this mod in the correct situation that you'll need it, we're going to need to build our loadout around our grenade uptime as much as possible. Right, so let's put the brakes on first. This build started out in a totally different location to where we ended up going with it, as I wasn't truly happy with the first take. So on that, I'm going to cover two exotic armor options with this build, giving the pros and cons of each and stating which one I prefer. Now onwards to our Titan, with arguably one of the most versatile ability exotics in the game, the Armamentarium. This Titan exotic chest piece comes with the intrinsic perk and another thing, which gives you a second grenade charge. Now obviously to make surge detonators work, we will be running an arc striker subclass, and I know that top tree would automatically grant a bonus grenade charge thanks to the magnitude perk, but using Armamentarium, it opens the subclass up to let us use my favourite code of the missile, for no other reason than Ballistic Slam. However, subclass tree choice isn't a massive deal here as any will obviously do and I know that some people here prefer using bottom tree, so take your pick. As for the grenade of choice, we're going to use the pulse grenade due to its ease of use. However, the lightning grenade and flashbang can be strong in their own rights too with this build. Now that we've got the base setup sorted, let's spec out this grenade uptime. And there's no better mod than another seasonal artifact one, Lightning Strikes Twice. This class item mod costs 7 neutral energy and is one of my favourites from the season. After throwing an arc grenade, gain increased grenade recharge for a short time. Arc final blows extend the duration of this benefit. This perk is truly awesome and the recharge rate bonus is incredible. On throwing a grenade, you'll get an initial stat boost for 4 seconds, which can be extended with any arc final blow for up to 20 seconds. And when I say any arc final blow, this is not just abilities, it also includes weapons too. Risk Runner, Hair Apparent and Symmetry are perfect for this build as they are all super strong arc weapons with great ammo capacity and therefore increase the chances of regular arc final blows. It does effectively double the regen rate of your arc grenades compared to your stat bar and the beauty of this perk is that it works in both PvE and the Crucible. The stat boost increase will depend on the tier of enemy killed but any increase to this boost time will only be a positive benefit. And as you're rocking two grenades with armamentarium you can get both back in no time at all, giving you ample opportunities to use at least one grenade to disrupt an overload champion at any time with surge detonators. 
Now before we get into specking out the rest of this grenade focus build, I just want to lean into another exotic chest piece which I think is actually better than Armamentarium, but does obviously lose us that second grenade charge unless you run top tree striker. Heart of Inmost Light is my actual pick here, and it was only something I thought about after playing with the initial build. I felt the downtime of the grenade ability was just not quick enough and I wanted it to be faster and flow more into the gameplay style. Overflowing Light is the intrinsic exotic perk here, which states that when you use an ability, a grenade, melee or barricade, this empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have a faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage and barricades have more hit points. So how this works is if you pop your barricade you get an instant buff to your other abilities for 9 seconds. You can then use your melee to get a 2 time stack of empowered which will further buff your grenade. Simply throw your grenade and enjoy the bonus regen rate to all abilities. Now for me with this build I'd recommend throwing that grenade first, especially if it is directed at an overload champion. You can then use your melee or barricade as you see fit to get that 2 time stack and with the rest of the mods in this build, you'll have your grenade back in no time at all. Honestly, this build just felt so much better with Heart of Inmost Light. However, the Armamentarium is not to be sniffed at either, both are very viable options, but it just depends on how you're going to play it. Now to max out on the grenade build, you want to spec into a few different mods here too. Obviously, any discipline mod to max out your general grenade cooldown is a must, but you can also consider using enhanced impact induction on your gauntlets. This Arc Affinity mod will give a boost to your grenade cooldown when causing damage with a melee ability. So when using your Ballistic Slam or other melee, you can supplement any grenade downtime if you've got out of sync at any point. You can also use the Solar Affinity Bomber mod on your class item to boost grenade cooldown when using your class ability too. You can boost this even further by using a Demolitionist perk weapon, but given the mods we've stacked into with this build, it's not essential or required, but would be an added bonus. Now we're going to chuck in some War Mine Cell mods into this build to make it just even more potent. And there's none better to pair with this top arc build than Tyrant Surge. Yes, we've got the seasonal artifact trifecta here with this one. Tyrant Surge allows you to spawn a Warmind Cell when causing Arc Ability Damage with your Grenade, Melee or Super. So as we're leaning into near unlimited Arc Grenades with this build, this mod makes perfect sense, as every Grenade and Melee will spawn a Warmind Cell. Now with this Warmind Cell, there's a number of options, but due to the amount of mods we've already used, it does limit us a little bit unless you have maxed out Masterworked Armor. So we are literally going to keep it simple here with the power of Rasputin. This Void Affinity mod will mean you do increased weapon damage to enemies near to a Warmind Cell, which as we will be producing a ton of, it will help with higher level enemies. You can obviously use either Warmind's Longevity or Global Reach to enhance the benefit of this mod even further. These two mods made it into the top 3 of our seasonal mod tier list recently. Check out the link in the description for the full ranking of all the season of the worthy mods. Now lastly, onto the weapons to finish off this build. Now to increase Warmind Cell production, I'm going to recommend a good roll of the Seraph VY7 SMG. I've got a great one here with 4 times the charm and Vorpal to increase the overall weapon damage output. Also, with it being an Arc Affinity weapon, it will assist with the stat boost from Lightning Strikes twice too. Plus, you can use the Anti-Barrier Champion mod for dealing with Barrier Champions too. Now, if you have a Demolitionist perk kinetic weapon like Perfect Paradox, that'll fit very nicely into this build. As well as any high tier DPS heavy weapon with Arc weapons like Hair Apparent, Legend of Acrius, Thunderlord or even World Line Zero being a preferential choice here. Also consider Leviathan's Breath to round out the anti-champion mods thanks to its unstoppable Big Game Hunter perk. Now I've covered a variety of these arc builds this season and I've got to say every single one of them is so much fun, with this one included. 
Having unlimited double arc grenades in a Titan Slamic arc battery machine is space magic personified. However, it is not as obviously potent as the Hunter and Warlock variants we have covered, but it does do the job. It's a great build for all aspects of the game and can be used in high tier Nightfall ordeals at all levels. Please let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see any of the artifact mods return next season. There's quite a few that I'd definitely like to see. If you're new here then please hit subscribe, it's a free and easy way to support the channel and will keep you up to date with all the latest builds. Also, a rating down below really helps me out. As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.